so just a recap for the video. Uh, we're going to take our code from the previous lecture where we're using all these um, function based view methods and we're going to convert them to class based view methods. And then uh, for the user auth part of our app, we're going to use the built in authentication view methods. So where did that go? That go up. Right here, where to go? Authentication views. So they've got some built in ones, authentication view, login view. That's one we're going to be using. Um, log out view, uh, log in, log out. And is there a sign up one? I think maybe sign up. Uh, we might be doing uh, our own. Let's see. Yeah, for our sign up one, we're going to be creating our own view method for that using a built in create view class. And we'll talk about that once we get to it. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to in our blog app. So I'm just going to close that. Close that in our views for a blog app. I'm going to open up those URLs for that. And I'm just going to copy these down. And I'm going to comment these out. And I'm just going to do like a function based uh, routes or function based view. And then down here, I'm going to say like class based view routes. Uh, yeah. So <clears throat> here we're going to create a class post as a view. Do, uh, I think Chad went over this on Saturday a little bit, right? Yeah. Was that yes? Cool. All right. <clears throat> so, and then here for the protected, I'm going to create a protected uh, view as view. All right. Uh, and I guess I can do views dot post views dot protected as view. All right. I'm going to go ahead and do my views. And I'm going to say uh, function based view methods just, and then down here, this is where I'm going to create my class base. All right, <clears throat> I'm going to comment these out. Uh, but before I actually do that, um, since I am working on an existing repo, whoop, I'm going to create a separate branch just so you can, you'll be able to see, um, or should I do that? Now I'll just keep, what do you all recommend I do? So on this main branch, should I have everything, all the code from both function base and class-based views, or should I create a separate branch for class-based view methods and then push that up and you'll be able to have a separate branch for the class-based views? What do y'all want? Separate. I'd prefer to if it's not that like much more work. Yeah, check out. Perfect. That's what I was going to do. I was just, all right, I'm going to say uh, class based uh, views. Yeah. There we go. So now I'm on the class based views. Everything else stays the same. Go up a couple times, run that server. Great. <clears throat> All right, so down here, uh, I'm going to create a class based view called post. So, class post, which is actually going to inherit from 
the view uh, class Django, class base views. So looks like there's, we have a template view. This is pretty cool. So we have a, a specific uh, template view that we can um, use if we only want to render a template where we're not actually passing any data in, it's just render the template. Um, but we don't want that. Um, so we have, uh, let's see, we have book list view, uh, introduction to class based views. So here we go. We want to use the very, uh, the base view called view. So we're going to inherit from the, that. So from the views, we're going to inherit from the built-in view class. <clears throat> and now that post, so I just want to look at where is, so if we look, if we, if, if you read through the documentation, the view, we can have like a greeting, we can add like any variables here, but we have a def dot get. So if we scroll down, so you can see here from the view, this example, we have a get and a post request. So previously up here, uh, not, wait, not up here. If we wanted to do like, a, do you remember if it would be like if method or request dot method equals post one run a line of code else if request that method equals get run an extra uh, this other uh, block of code where the view methods or the view class has these built in methods get post that will run whether or not there is a get request or a post request. So we can run all our logic in this def dot get method because right here with all posts we're just grabbing all the posts so we can all we do is do def get self uh, request and then literally do pretty much the same thing oh no, that's not good there we go <clears throat> So, and if I just come over here, I'm just gonna comment this protected route out first and uncomment out this protected route just so we don't get an error. Uh, we're still getting an error. Uh, why? Oh, just uncomment that right now, just so we, it's the server's working. So if I do TomTom, Tom, or if I just go to blog, that should work. Blog. Object post has no attribute objects. Where are we going? Oh, look at that. Post and post are named the same thing. Um, I'll do uh, post view. I'll call it post view just. So yeah, so that's a mistake I made. So you should have things called differently. Um, so that should work now. There we go. So. Everything still works. Great, we're able to get all our posts. We have an anonymous user. So we get, when we do a get request to that post view, um, slash blog, we grab all the posts. Um, all this code is still stay the same, but the only difference is we're doing, we're explicitly saying, hey, when we get a do a get request, execute this get method on this view class, this post view class. <clears throat> Questions on that. All right, so next let's go ahead and do the protected route. Um, I'm just gonna comment out this. Very similar down here, we just class protected. Um, retrieve route or protected view inherits from the view class and we could do pretty much identical to what we're doing in the post view def.get self uh, request 
And we are going to just, I'm going to comment this out and do everything essentially the same there. Uh, protected view. Okay. <clears throat> and you'll see, we will do a little bit of refactoring here, um, but in the meantime, everything should still be working. Um, sign up user, or I'll go back. Login user, uh, Tom Tom. And now if I go to protected, just to make sure that is still working. There we go. All right. Any questions? So far. So we use the class based view. Uh, let me actually comment that out just to make sure it's still working. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so everything's still working as. Can you go up to where you imported view? Yeah, let me collapse this a little bit come up here. So you're importing from Django.views, import the view class. So, so that wasn't a built-in class we're inheriting from, it's one we made. Uh, which one, the view class? Uh huh. No, we are, uh, this is from built-in, this is the built-in Django view class. So gotcha. we did not make this. So you can read about that view class. Uh, let's see, oh geez, there's a million of them. Uh, where is it? There's gotta be a, I might be on the wrong page though. Um, it tells you all the responses view. So here's the generic base view class. <clears throat> and all its capabilities. So it's got setup, dispatch options. Um, yeah, so here's like an example of how to do it. Um, then we also have a template view class. So what part of the view class are we using in our code? Like, what is it doing for us? We're using all the get requests and the HTTP methods. So we don't have to explicitly say um so like we're doing it specifically doing a get request right here and right here that's the only difference right now gotcha so like right now it's not really adding a substantial amount of value um it's just uh that's why i kind of like doing the function based views because i have more control where uh the built-in view class and the built-in classes kind of extrapolates and kind of magically does a lot of stuff for us <clears throat> thank you yep all right so now let's actually go and work on the uh whoop, whoop, the auth part of our the authentication part of our app so I'm going to go to URLs and the views. <clears throat> I'm going to collapse that. So function-based. Just. All right. So we've got our function based and our class based uh, routes. <clears throat> All right. I just want to make sure what I know what my base route is. So off. Okay. Just making sure. All right. So, <clears throat> so let's first work on the login view method. So I'm going to comment that out here, or actually the first thing, I'm going, to, I'm going to bring it down there. And for here, <clears throat> we're going to see what we want to do. Uh, 
Yeah. Where'd it go? Right here. <clears throat> so the Django authentication system. So uh, auth use. Here we go. <clears throat> so login. Okay, that's decorator. I want to see where it's actually displaying. Was it really far down? So authentication views, this is what I'm looking at. So Django's authentication system has built in authentication views. Um, we'll get to all this uh, in the next lecture, but we wanna look at what authentication views we have access to. So we have this login view. So this is a list of all the views uh, that the built-in Django auth system provides. Um, I guess we can look at using those view methods, uh, but let's go back. <clears throat> so we have this login view class. So auth views login views as template. So I'm just scroll down. We have a logout view. Um, but where'd it go? Uh, let's see if I can find an example. Um, but essentially. Oh, here it is. Perfect. <clears throat> um, import auth views. Let's see if this works. <clears throat> so in here, I'm going to I'll just do import views. I wonder if that's going to throw a wrench in things. Yeah, I'll just keep it as is like, like, like so. So I'm importing the authentication views um, as auth views, just to keep my current views uh, separate. Um, but I don't necessarily have to, if I'm going to be removing the function-based view methods, I don't need to import it as auth views, but just for the time being, I am. So what I'm going to be using is the built-in login view. Where'd it go? Here, the login view class. So I'm going to use that built in login view class. I'm going to say as view. I don't necessarily need the name or anything right now, but I can, I'm just going to keep that because it still works. But this login view method, we can pass in attributes such as what template do we want to render when we visit the login view uh, route? Um, what happens when we, when uh, the next, when a user logs in, where does it redirect to? Um, you can read all this other stuff, redirect authenticated user, su success URL hosts, um, get default redirect URL. So it returns the reader out to redirect after login. <clears throat> so you can read a little bit more here about what that does. But the one we actually want to use is the template name. Like what template do we want to render? And if we look in the login view, what does it say? So we're gonna want to render. So here's that login method, login user. We're gonna wanna render the login HTML form or template. So login, we want to render this template. So if I come over here, auth user login HTML. <clears throat> so I'm looking down here, I'm not getting any errors. So let's just see if everything still works. Uh, if I just refresh, go back, if I log out, now I've, I'm rendering, so everything's still working as correct as desired, at least for right now. But if I log in, let's see what happens. Tom, Tom, uh, ABC, ABC, one, two, three, one, two. <clears throat> now I might get an error because, or if I look here, um, the next page or redirect URL is already default. There's already like a default um, login view, or there's already a default URL redirect. 
built into this class. So if everything, so it's kind of view, auth views, login view, as view, I'm passing in a template name and that template name is a login. So let's just see what happens if I log in. All right, I get a error, page not found. So I'm doing a get request, request URL. So this is where it's redirecting me to localhost accounts profile. I don't have that URL um, in my app, but this is the default redirect URL that a user um, gets redirected to after they log in. And if I wanted to highlight this and go to definition, I'm looking, so what I did was highlighted that, go to definition, and what it did was take me to the source code of the login view method. So here are all the attributes, authentication form, next page, none, redirect, you are a field name, redirect field name. Um, let's see. So let's see, I just wanna see. All right, <clears throat> so this is that built-in login view method. That's what we're importing. And you can kind of see the template name. The default template name is this registration slash login HTML. But we're overriding that because we want them to look at um, this auth user login HTML. So what we can do is next page is, where is it? It's none. I just want to read through the documentation real quick. Um, where did that next page? The URL to redirect after login defaults to login redirect URL. I don't know what the login redirect URL is. So defaults to account profile. So this is probably a settings variable. So the named you pattern or requests are redirected after login view. Okay. So what we can do is go into our settings in our Django project. So come over here and down at the bottom, say our login or redirect URL. And where do we want to redirect the user to? Um, so we can look at where we originally would redirect a user after a login, we'd redirect them to the all posts. So we can either go to a uh, log because that's the all posts, or I think it takes in a, an also a named route. Oh, what happened here? All right. <clears throat> so if I go back, I have a quick question about yep. the about that named route. Since since you have two you have two apps in this project, how how will it know um, specifically that that named route applies to one? But you have to use the uh, app name colon. I've been running into this problem all day. That's that's why I'm asking. All right, let let me see if this actually works first. And to see if this named route actually works. If it doesn't, we can just hard code it. Um, but yeah. So if I just do Tom, Tom, uh, ABC, ABC, one, two, three, one, two, uh, whatever. So if I log in, it, it took me to that named route. So it, it knows, Django just knows that, hey, if it probably doesn't have a, so if you wanted it to go to a specific route, if it has a, I don't know how it does it, but if you have a forward slash in front of it, it's probably looking for a hard coded uh, part of that. But if it doesn't, it's looking for a named route and Django just probably scans all the apps and looks for the named route, all posts. I could have also just done hard coded blog and that would have also worked. So if I do. And that also works because it's hard coded to blog. Either or will work. 
Why can't I use yourself? <clears throat> so that's with us using the built-in login view method. Um, what else do we need? So we got the built-in login view method. Oh, shoot. Maybe, yep. So now I can comment that out because I'm not using that anymore. <clears throat> Next, let's just do log out because log out is very similar. Um, but for log out, let's go ahead and use um, a custom view. Let's like, like create our own log out view, even though it's not going to really do much. Um, all right. <clears throat> so let's create a custom log out view. So in our views, custom log out view as view. So we're going to create a custom view like we were doing in this view or like post view kind of. Um, but we're going to utilize the built in log out view. So inside of here, we're going to create a class, a custom log out view, and we're going to inherit from the log out view class which we need to inherit or we need to import. Um, there we go. So log out view, not that one. Oh, let's go back. There we go. So if I wanted to log in, so so in here, I'm just gonna import uh, trib import off. Now it imports everything. So now. Oh no, I messed that up. Oh, there we go. So dot views, I wanna import the logout view. <clears throat> so there we go. And the only thing we're changing about this one, just cause I wanna show you that, hey, we can again, inherit from the logout view in here, if I go, log out view we have this next page we have template name so we're not actually rendering a template we're just going to redirect a user we can either use the the log out redirect url or we can use like this next page attribute and say hey where do you want to what the hell uh where do you want to go after that um we can go to the off login after we log out, we can go to the login page. So let's see if this works. So if I refresh this, Tom, Tom is right there. I just want to make sure everything's commented out. So let's comment out the log out and comment out this function based view method. And so now we're using the custom logout view, which we created this custom logout view class. We're inheriting from the login or logout view off view uh, module. So, and we're just saying, hey, where do you want to redirect the user after they actually log out? So if I click here, if I click logout, it takes me to login page. I could have gone to the blog if I wanted to.
So if I wanted to, I could have just stayed here, the blog, where all the blogs are, but now there's an anonymous user. So that's just a choice you could have done. You could have chosen what you want to do with that. So <clears throat> the last one we want to do is the sign up. So I'm just going to comment out the sign up. So the sign up does not have a built in authentication view method. So we're going to have to create our own. So uh, in here, we're just going to go uh, sign up. We're going to create a sign up view um, as a view. So there we go. <clears throat> and then down here, uh, we're going to go class sign up. And then in here, there is Django uh, create a view. So <clears throat> there's generic views or editing views. These views are method or view or class class views that allow you to make edits to to a form essentially. Like if you want to update something, if you want to create something, so like create, read, update, delete, except minus the reading. So we're just going to create. So because we want to create a record, um, we can do an update view a delete view or just a generic form view. So we have form view, so it displays a form. Um, if you scroll down, create view, a view that displays a form for creating an object or creating a record in the database, redisplaying the form with validation errors, if any. <clears throat> so this create view class inherits from all these other classes. So the base view class, process form view, single object mixing. I don't know what any of these are, base create view, all these classes. So you can kind of see some of the, an example of it. So what we want to do is inherit from the create view uh, class. All right. So I'm coming up here. I don't think I need that. <clears throat> I'll just do edit for right now. So I can inherit from the create view class. And now uh, we got to sign up. I'm just going to comment this out for right now. So what we need is what do we want to create when, or what model do we want to use when we're for this? So we're not using an author. So what model are we using for the sign up field? So does anybody remember what model we're using? Did I even import it? Um, so let's actually look at what that model is called. So it's just the user model, cool. So I need to input from models, import the model or user model. So instead of author, we're gonna be using the user model. <clears throat> and form. So form class, what form do we want to actually use? I know this is for the form view, but to say we still have that, um, we can go to the definition. You can see uh, the base view we inherit, uh, what form we want to use. Um, if you look at the source code, so we can say like form class, what form do we want to actually show the user? So in our previous sign up user, we had the sign up form. And that is that we created sign up user form. So the form class is that sign up user form. Um, what template do we want to use? So the template name, 
so that we want to render. So we want to render to the sign up HTML. And then afterwards, uh, where we want to reroute the user. So upon a successful sign up, success URL, we're just going to go to the blog page. <clears throat> So we had to create our own signup class, which inherited from the create view class and the model we're using when we're creating a new, we're signing up a new user is the user model. What form are we displaying to that user? We're displaying the signup user form, which we, we created yesterday. What template are we rendering to the user? And that's that signup.html template and then Upon a successful login or a, su a su uh, successful sign up, where do we want to reroute the user? And we're just going to go to blog. Yeah, just slash blog. So if I refresh everything, I go to sign up user. Um, uh, Greg, I would say is premium. Oops, A, B, A, B. One, two, three. Oh, no. A, B. And then we can sign up the user. So we signed up the user. Now we can actually, so we should have a successful sign up. And there we go. Everything is still working. So we literally just converted all of our routes or our auth routes and to um, class-based views and using the built-in auth view methods, such as logout view, uh, login view. We also had to use the create view method to actually sign up a user because there isn't a, a view method or an auth view method for that. But lastly, let's go back to our blog app views. So we have this post view and we have this protected view. Um, I'm just gonna get rid of this. <clears throat> so in our original code for the protected route, we would have to, we went, we actually had some logic in there that said, hey, if the user is authenticated, go to the secret route, else redirect the user to somewhere else. But we don't have to um, have this logic in here uh, anymore because we can say, hey, um, we can add a decorator. So where is it? Uh, Login decorator. <clears throat> oh. So right here, so the login required decorator I'll, says, hey, make sure that this entire class or this method, the user has to be logged in or authenticated for them to have access to this method or even an entire class. So you can kind of look here. Um, but where am I actually looking for? Login required decorator. Um, at, uh, Let's just see if this works. <clears throat> so maybe the protected view we want, we might want, um, we can have login required or yeah. So login re required, just wanna see if,
There we go. <clears throat> so I'm going to import that at the top. And what this is, is saying is, hey, in order for a user to come here, a user must uh, be logged in. But maybe we don't want to see if the user is authenticated. We have that one flag. What is it? Is premium uh, on the models for the user? So is premium. So instead of is authenticated, we'll just see if the user is a premium user. So we're just going to assume all um, uh, we're just going to log out the user if they don't have that flag. All right. <clears throat> so let's just see if this works. If if I log in, so Greg is logged in. If I go to this protected. All right, protected object has no attribute user. All right, what I'm going to need to do, <clears throat> instead of the, that login decorator, I'm gonna have to import the method decorator. Method decorator. Oh, I got to go back to that. And import the login required, which I already had. I just deleted that. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm adding this method decorator saying, hey, the, a login is required for a user to access this. So if I go, if I refresh that, now I have access to this, this route. So if I go back and if I log out, and I go to protected, we'll probably get an error. So page not found because it's protected. But if I log in or let's sign up a new user, um, not premium. So A, B, A, B, one, two, three, one, two. So not premium is not a premium user. So I'm gonna log in. Uh, So now not premium is logged in. Now, if I go to the protected route, I should still be able to access this, but the user isn't gonna have that premium flag. So this is gonna be false. So then it's just gonna log that user out. So if I just go to protected, click enter, it logged that user out and then it rerouted me here to the all posts. So you can have this method decorator. I'm gonna have to Google this real quick. Cause it's in here somewhere. <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> Decorating the class. So we can have this method decorator in here. All right, does anybody have any questions about using the built-in class-based authentication uh, view methods or anything? <clears throat> 